All right. Hello, everyone. I am Varlden. I am the runner. And my name is Natara. I'm going to help commentate. And so uh, before we begin, I just want to say that there was a prequel to this game called Attack the Lights. You don't need to know it to appreciate the game. Basically, in typical cartoon kid show fashion, there was an enemy and then we made it our friend. And the friend is a prism, so prisms are friend shaped. But timing is going to begin when I click new game here. So I'm going to count down. Five, four, three, two, one, and go. So the first thing I'm going to do is skip a cutscene that tells you some vital lore of the game. We don't need that because this is a speed run. Steven and the Light Steven are going to do a couple of things there, including the fusion dance from Dragon Ball, which is pretty cool. So now we're here in Steven's house, and first thing we're going to do is just grab that cheeseburger backpack up there. If you know Steven Universe, you know that this is something from the show. It's a pretty neat way that they introduce a way to have an inventory in this game. And we're going to leave and head out to Beach City and try to find out where this prism is going off to. Cheeseburger backpack, cheeseburger backpack. Now, um, Steven happens to be the slowest person that can join your party. However, I can't switch yeah. over to anyone else right now. Out of combat, all your characters can do different things, and Steven's happens to be rolling. There are certain points where rolling with Steven will actually be faster than moving with a different character. So there are a couple of times where I may switch over to Steven and do a roll for a little bit of time save. And one of the things that his role can do is uncover things that are buried in sand and snow, bones, you know, things of that nature. And here I'm going to try to jump on top of Lars's head and roll off of it, just like that. Thank you very much, Lars. It's very important for the speedrun. If you don't roll off of his head, bad things may occur. And we roll into our cutscene, and we're going to get a little more story here. Um... We love story. And there's Greg uh, over there, that is Steven's dad. He plays guitar, he's a pretty cool guy. Dad, what? And there's a uh, giant spaceship here. Um, and we are now going to be introduced to the villain of this game. She is a gem known as... Redacted. And she is here to get her prism back, because it belongs to her. Now, you'll uh, learn her name later. I, I just don't want to spoil the chat. Now, there are a couple of places here in this game where you have options for which dialogue you can choose. And I'm always going to choose the one that either has the least amount of text boxes afterwards, since that would be faster, or I pick them because it gives a certain character experience. And it also helps to fill up their relationship bar which I will uh, which uh, we'll talk about here after we have our little first fight here. So the prism is capable of creating these light constructs and sets them up throughout the world. So these are the enemies that you fight in the game. So as a uh, wild turn of events, the very first fight happens to be a tutorial. That basically tells you how you fight. Press this button to do this and that. Now, a cool thing here is that the tutorial will not continue on this screen if you don't press the A button. So the enemies won't attack you, but your star bar in the bottom left, which is what lets us do our attacks, keeps on building. So we want to let it build up until it's about in the bottom right hand of the star, and that's the optimal place to resume the tutorial. And doing it this way, we are basically saving about 10 seconds. So it's a pretty cool time save. So Steven's attack there, he uses his shield, dashes into an enemy, has a bit of knockback. Connie's first attack is pretty straightforward. We'll see that after Steven does his little healing thing here. But Connie just runs forward with a scream and attacks the enemy. So we're going to attack this one. Wait for this guy to move forward a little bit. Get a little neato burrito in there. 
And the Construct's defeated, and we're done with the first fight. Now, while I continue on to the next fights, um, one thing that we want to talk about is uh, the harmonization between two characters for team attacks. And I'm going to let uh, Natara explain that for you. Absolutely. So we want to work on getting building up that harmonization between different characters. In this case, for Beach City, we want to build that up between Steven and Connie. Uh, once we get that max, that will allow them to do special attacks, um, which are going to be very helpful, uh, especially for uh, later areas. We can build up their harmonization. Um, one of the ways, unfortunately, is random, where if someone does a really good attack, you can give them a kudos, and that will bring up their uh, synchronization and uh, definitely build that. Um, I believe some of the text options you can select as well will increase relationships. So Later on in the game, we'll be uh, trying to synchronize Connie with some of the other characters, but for this section, it is, in fact, Connie and Steven. And uh, just like Natara said, there we go. That was uh, one of those kudos options. Basically just kind of give someone a thumbs up and say, hey, good job, and it builds them up. The other thing is during these fights, um, if one enemy is going to attack one of the characters and another character comes in with the kill, it will build up their relationship bar a teensy little bit. And that's pretty much like the only um, consistent way to build up. So all of these fights, what I'm trying to do is to beat them as fast as possible while also reading the field and trying to see what attacks I should do and who I should have attack in order to make sure that by the end of these fights in Beach City, the two of them are harmonized. And now here, I'm finally able to switch over to Connie. So at the battle, Connie uses that uh, big old sword there to swing. Now, if you ever played Final Fantasy VII, you've probably noticed that she maybe resembles a character known as Cloud. Connie and Cloud both happen to like swords that are much larger than their frame, which I approve of. Connie definitely uses it well. Now, another thing that I am doing in these fights, um, just because we know from doing these fights so often, is like the fastest way to kind of get all the enemies set up to be able to maximize the damage you can do. So for example, there I have Steven dash into the red one to kill it because it pushes the blue one up into the top. And now they're next to each other, so whenever Connie does her attack, they'll be like basically close enough to each other that when she attacks, it'll hit the both of them. And unfortunately, Greg has gotten the random aggro. The threat in this game doesn't really make much sense. As you can see, Greg has just been sitting there with his guitar not bothering anyone, and that light construct decided that Greg needs to be attacked. Uh, excuse me, his hair is too powerful? I, I can see why he's a threat. Yes, he does have very powerful hair, that is a good point. But Steven's gonna defend his dad's honor and dash into this enemy here. And that one was on Connie, so they built up a little bit more. We have two more fights to go. And we have gotten our first level up. Ooh. Steven's happy. And at this level, Steven can now bubble people. So he can put up a bubble, and it's going to reduce the damage that uh, your allies take in fights. Only good for one, though. One attack. Ooh. So the first thing we do is we give Steven all of those levels, up, uh, levels in attack. Introduces you to using the backpack outside of combat. Wants you to heal someone up. And we're going to strike and get into this fight. And now we're going to get to see what Greg does in battle. So we're going to dash into this guy here. And Greg is going to play the guitar and do a damaging aura. Now if you can hear the battle music, you can hear that the guitar has been added to the track, which I think is really cool. And there are three different kinds of battle tracks. And each one of them has like a unique way that instruments get kind of uh, integrated into the track. And that's really cool there. The right one decided to target Connie, so we dash through it and they're gonna be built up a little bit. And I'm gonna wait and see what happens. That one looks like it's going for Steven. 
I want to see if I can get another uh, wave attack out of. Uh, probably not, but I think that might be good enough. The damage isn't really set in stone, so uh, it is possible that you, you might think that they're going to uh, do enough damage to defeat the enemy, and then you just get like a low damage roll. And Steven and Connie are almost all filled up, which is great. There is one dialogue option in a later area, so as long as they're one tick away, like they are right here after the last fight, you don't have to worry about syncing them up in one of the other two fights before the first boss. And great, we're on to the last Beach City fight. So again, dash into these guys are right next to each other here. Steam will actually uh, smack them both over to Greg. I feel a jam session coming on. Greg's gonna jam out, do some damage for us. Gonna have Connie sweep in with that sword. Now that one's a little mad at Greg. Can't blame him this time. He has been playing some pretty loud music. You know what you did, Greg. Oh, lucky hits. Occasionally, characters can get lucky hits. Uh, it doesn't really happen very often in Beach City, but they just uh, do additional damage. And we got our last kudos, so they are now synchronized. And let's have a Steven give him a poke. And there is the key to Beach City, which is what Mayor Dewey sent us to go off and find. Now, the key is not on this mob specifically, but it appears after you do three fights after that fight in front of Mayor Dewey. So there are a couple of other enemies, but it just so happens that this route is um, has the least amount of enemies, the fights you can do the quickest, and it basically ends you right next to Mayor Dewey. Otherwise, you're kind of getting far away from uh, Mayor Dewey in Beach City, so not too quick. Now, here we go. We get a badge. This game, in a lot of ways, reminds me of the first two Paper Mario games. Like, one in obviously being these uh, out-of-combat abilities that characters do. And there are also various badges that can uh, affect both in-battle and out-of-battle things, such as not taking falling damage if you fall into a pit or into fire. All bosses only uses three badges, but uh, other categories do utilize a few more. Now, here we are talking to Lion. And we're going to pick the first crystal gem that we meet, which is Garnet's. Not because Garnet's my favorite. I do love Garnet, but she's just the most useful for the speedrun. And I'm going to open up the menu here, hold an upwards angle, and start rolling with Steven. That is because there is a menu glitch where either out of combat and during those cutscenes, you can use a character's ability, or you can just move freely. It's uh, pretty wild. But there, by rolling with Steven, I'm able to get a little bit closer to the beach, so we save a bit of time. And now we're going to have our first fight with Garnet. Let's do and we're at the point now where we want to get Steven and Connie synchronized. Now, Connie has an awesome ability called Protect, so she goes in front of someone and protects them. And just by doing that, you build them up a little bit, and every time she defends like this, it builds them up as well. And there we go, we got a kudos, which is great. Keep it up, Connie. Now we're gonna to toss this attack band to increase Garnet's attack, and uh, she's just gonna go and knock these guys out. Got a couple of stars there, which is great. If you get at least two stars during the first two attacks, that helps speed up this little fight here in Beach City. Oh, I almost feel bad for these guys. But hey. Garnet would be someone who would say, mess with Steven and you'll catch these hands. These hands being massive gauntlets made out of whatever powerful steel that they're made out of. I think they're like constructs just like the gems. Yeah, so just very, very, very hard light. Yes. And so here we pick these, this option. It not only gives Garnet some experience, but... Basically, if you pick one of the other ones, Garnet kind of yells at you, so it's like a couple of extra text boxes. So for all intents and purposes, that's the uh, best one to pick. Now, for those who may not know Steven Universe, uh, the gems are actually like thousands of year old aliens. So, uh, yeah, they're not humans. 
I know it may not be too clear based on her appearance. I'm so proud of us. But anyway, we have completed Beach City and we're moving on to Beach Maybe City Woods. It's so going to roll into this here, grab another star fruits. And I'm going to hop on over here with Steven. Now, what if I told you this is the last what? intended non-boss battle fight in the entire game? What? That can't be possible. And I'm going to say, well, maybe it is, maybe it's not. So I told you that would be a spoiler. But yeah, no. Um, thanks to various routing over the past couple of months, we uh, actually do not do any more fights that are not bosses. And that is thanks to some pretty cool glitches and clips and things that have been discovered. Now, Familiar Grounds, since it's the last fight where we can sync up Connie and Garnet, why I also want these fights and well, I also want this fight to end quickly. I also want to make sure they get uh, synchronized. So that looks like maybe one more attack and they're going to be synced up. Yeah, come on. There we go. Oh, I guess uh, Greg's going to give Connie a little bit of kudos there. Everyone wants to give Connie kudos. She's just that good. Yeah, she's great. I'm very proud of Connie. She, she has come a long way. And one punch Garnet taking out that light construct. And in this area, for the, this entire area of Beach City Woods, because there's a couple of areas we go through, the game is basically set up so there's like one main area, then there's like four or five sub areas. Yes. So this here is familiar grounds. We collect these light dews, and you would use them to make these little trees to uh, access other uh, goodies or keys in this area. So you would use those to get to those che that chest up there, but uh, we're going to be skipping that. However, before I do that, I have to send Steven off on his own, roll through this log, and get a secret. Ooh, a secret. There is a shield schematic one, my favorite kind of burrito. And I'm going to roll on through back. And get on top of this rock here. There we go. So grab this rock, we're going to go into here, grab this chest, and we've gotten a key. Yep. So if it wasn't for that skip, we would have to do two more fights in this area. Uh, other categories such as glitchless have to do it, obviously, but all bosses we can just go ahead and do that skip. Yeah. Now I did mention that these gems are like thousands of years old, so you may be wondering, you know, what kind of stats do they have? So Garnet's power level happens to be uh, over 9,000. Just want to show that real quick. Thought that would be important. Now up there is a Light Steven. We won't be grabbing that Light Steven, but they are useful in the run. Basically, one Light Steven is more or less equivalent to doing one fight. So Connie's going to be grabbing a number of these throughout the run. Now what Steven does, I mean what uh, Greg does outside of battle is he plays this guitar. And there are various puzzles throughout the world where Greg plays guitar and it makes a chest or something else open up and you get something out of it. This is unfortunately the only time we'll be seeing Greg do this in the run. Um, everything else is in other areas or for getting other items that you don't need. This is the only time where it's absolutely necessary for Greg to play the guitar in order to continue on with the game. Now we have Garnet, right? Time to meet another crystal gem. Amethyst is going to be joining us. Yay! Hey, all right. Yep. And yes, this is a sequel to the phone game. I don't believe it is absolutely necessary to play the phone game first, but it, it is pretty good. But this is much expanded from the phone game. Mm-hmm. The phone game is pretty straightforward. It's not like a open RPG, sort of like the way that this game is. But still, if you're a Steven Universe fan, I probably recommend it. It's not too much. I think it's like $3. So 
So there is another Light Steven. We're gonna cut this grass, get the beefy sweatband. In addition to breaking blocks, um, what Connie can also do is cut grass like that. And you can find bits and items hidden in them. Gonna grab a together breakfast. Food's always good. Especially a together breakfast. Mm-hmm. And yeah, Connie is actually the second fastest character when it comes to general movement, so we're gonna be walking around with her a lot. <laughs> yes, and she is just as fast as Pearl, although you only use Pearl in one area later on because it's necessary. Otherwise, Pearl sadly doesn't have any abilities in combat that are really all that useful. Sad part about this run. Needs more Pearl. So we're going to open up the menu here, level up Connie, give her all attack. And we're also going to toss on that attack badge I picked up in Familiar Grounds, gives her a plus two attack. Using that menu glitch, I'm able to move during this cutscene, and I get back into the log just in time. Otherwise, you would have another text box when Steven gets back. And getting through there fast enough skips that, which is pretty cool. And we're opening up a uh, another door. And pretty much just some movement here until we get to the next area. And speaking of the next area, it's just about time for us to learn what we're going to be naming the first boss. So Very if I could, exciting. So if I could know who has won that poll, that would be lovely. Yes, and with a lead, with 45% out of the four options, Dave is in the lead. Dave is in the lead. Furnace Face was kind of close with 26%, but no, Dave reigns superior. Alright, the people have spoken. That's right. Insectasaw is going to be the boss's name. <laughs> Perfect, that was actually the last place option. <laughs> yeah, they probably didn't tell you the last place was the option I'm going to be picking. Yeah, cool. Enjoy, everyone. <laughs> Scammed. I think there's only one response for that, and that's you, Claude! And here we're going to be open up the menu again, and Connie's going to run right through that door. Connie doesn't really like walls, so... And right before the fight, we're going to... Open up this, grab these items, head through the log, because we've got a couple of more items to grab. And... Hessenite is the name of this gem. What a surprise. I did not see that one coming. Mm -hmm. Totally shocked. I thought she was like a Nephrite or something. I thought she was Redacted. Yeah, well, I, I don't think Redacted gets introduced into the movie. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> So, Hess Knight has brought the prism back to this recharge station to give it some more power. And so now it's going to summon a big light construct. Oh man, that it's. It's. Alright. It's going to be a really tough battle, so give me some blessed RNGs, please. Get those blessed RNGs in there. So for this fight, we're going to be using Steven and Connie's team attack, which is they're going to fuse into Stevani. Yay, Stevani! So we're going to fuse into Stevani. We're going to go over here. We're going to put on an attack band. So one of Stevani's attack is uh, basically this flurry of blows with her sword. Which is why it was actually important for Steven to get attacked when we leveled him up, because otherwise uh, we would not have enough for a 3-cycle, which I'll hopefully be able to get. Looks like it might be close. I was a little bad in the beginning there. It's not really a mashing thing, it's more of a rhythm thing, which is kind of interesting. But there we go, a 3-cycle Dave. But it's not quite over. Dave has one more attack left in him. If only there is another crystal gem. Whoa, who is that? And why are they stealing my kill? Why are yeah, they so great? Taking away all the experience. Rude. But there is Pearl. Yay. Last member of the DK crew. Oh, sorry, crystal gems. Got my games mixed up. 
Everyone, three cheers for Bird Mom in chat. Oh my goodness. Wow. And also, I don't have to open oh anything. No. I can just jump during this cutscene. So, trying to get to the end of this little area as fast as I can. And we got plenty of goodies to acquire. Wow. Ha, you thought I was going to get one of those. It's actually this chest that I need. So I need a milkshake, because I'm getting a little bit thirsty. They're important. And popping up here for a Together Forever breakfast. This is a more powerful version of the previous breakfast item. That one just heals up some health to every party member. Together like Forever breakfast, that heals up completely. It probably includes orange juice or something like that. That's where the extra health comes from. So now we're in Business Forge. We have to go through here and do a couple of things before we get on to the next area and get back to Bismuth. But, um, now, you can't get mad at me for that pun because Bismuth actually makes that pun like three times in the show, so... Listen, I'm on it's, team puns anyways. Yeah. It, it's canonically a thing that happens. Accurate. She, she would be mad at me if I didn't say that. Unfortunately, she does not actually appear in the game because this is after she has been bubbled. And this takes place before uh, Reunited and when she was um, unbubbled, so... She's only here in spirit. Now we're going to come over here and we're not quite going to go into the forge. There we go, I want Garnet. Now I'm going to perform a little something called Forge Skip. If it doesn't look difficult, you're correct. It's actually a very easy thing to perform. So by doing that, I got Connie kind of out of bounds and she's able to run up here. So we're running up the side of the volcano and we're going to do a little jump here and run up into here. Now, however this game is set up and however the flags work, the game doesn't actually care about anything at this point except that I exit back into the main area through this door. Otherwise, you'd come back later and go through this whole area. We're you got here. like four Steven, tough uh, block, like, like uh, fights that you have to do to get through. It's like a little gauntlet. However, doing this sets the flag for this cutscene here. Hey, that has a nice ship. Oh, no. Wow, we found it. Oh, it's gone. And Hesonite has now gone back to her warship. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to set a quest flag for us to go back to Beach City and talk to Lion. Because Lion is now set to go, oh, hey, let's uh, send you all off to Hesonite's warship. You got a fight to do. However, the game can have multiple flags up at the same time. So mm. we're going to continue with the rest of the game because I got a bunch of bosses to go fight. Any percent would just continue on to Hesonite at this point. But basically, in terms of what this does for speedrunning and time save, we cut out one extra loading time for coming back to the forge later on, and also the time it would take navigating over here. So, it ends up being, I want to say, maybe a 20 to 30 second time save, depending on how fast the game loads. Because the loading times are not consistent. They up uh, and kind of vary. All right, come on, Steven. There we go. Oh, yeah. Sometimes Steven just likes to teleport like that. And now we're going to upgrade Steven's shield using the chroma that we found both here and in the chroma vein a little bit earlier. Now, we don't need the upgrade per se. Whenever Steven gets a perfect block, he regenerates health a little bit. It's like a little regen. Uh, buff that he gets. But the reason we have to do this is that the game won't actually let you continue unless at least one weapon has been upgraded. And so Stevens just happens to be the one that takes the least amount of time. Otherwise, we would have to like go into that forge area, get some other kinds of chroma, or you'd have to like reset your time to make the vein respawn. So that's just slow. So we just grab Stevens. And now we're heading to the Great North. I can uh, switch. 
I can switch characters to get Connie a little bit further ahead there. Now, the Great North does, in fact, take place in Canada, so Canadian representation. Woo! Go Canada! And it is a very appropriate name. It's called Chili Chili River, and it is pretty relaxing. There really isn't too much of a threat, I say, as the snowball is in an inopportune position. Uh, let's see. Uh, that should be fine. Yeah, that snowball can be a little bit of a pain. Yeah, for the most part, we're going to be just doing some movement, getting to uh, getting through all of these areas. However, first off, we're going to have a phone call from a certain someone. Um, it's Peridot. You clods. So Peridot happens to be playing a RPG herself, and is going to be running us a couple of times while we're in this area. Gonna okay, jump so over this guy here. I was gonna say, here's an important chat, a question for chat. Is Peridot best gem or best gem? Put put the vote in chat. Gonna be grabbing some fire salt bits. Those are basically like the attack band, except the person who you put them on is also going to take a little bit of damage over time. So, you know, comes with its little cost. Now, what do we have here? A spaceship. Ooh. How mysterious. I'm sure that can't mean anything at all. Not at all. Mm -mm. So sometimes when I run this game, I like to make some puns. And on occasion, the delivery can be kind of rocky. But every once in a while, I make a perfect pun. And it's just like a true gem. It's absolutely phenomenal. And whenever those happen, I I'm really proud of myself. As you should be. Not every day you get to collect treasure. Oh, and this guy's being a little mean. I need to get that level. See, this is this is what I get for telling a pun. Now the the enemy is angry at me. <laughs> Made the RNG get gods angry. There we go. Got the level up charm. And that is it for Chili Chili River. And like Steven has just said, next stop, more adventure. Woo! Now here, it's a little bit faster if we just kind of uh, jump up here and get out of bounds. Oh no, are you patched? Think we're patched, folks. No! There we go. Yeah, it did it. So in a uh, in here, it's a little bit faster to go out of bounds instead of going through the intended way. Um, mostly because one, you get to skip a cutscene with that spaceship again, and also just the general movement to get here to the end is maybe about three seconds faster. The only unfortunate thing really is that you have to control Steven. No one else can get the height to get out of bounds. Like, if we could get Connie, then this would be so much faster. However, a cool thing about going out of bounds here is that you actually are able to go back in bounds very easily right where I need to be, which is over here by the waterfall and where there is a light Steven, which I'm going to grab with Connie. She's going to get a level up and we're going to head back up here. But before we can move on, Paradox is going to call us. Yay! <laughs> and before we move on, I'm going to toss a level up charm onto Connie since she just leveled up from that light Steven. She now has the study ability. And I'll explain that a little later. 
if you remember, so Garnet and Connie are synchronized right now, so they do have a team attack, and that is going to be incredibly We're useful for there. the boss fights. And uh, I'm looking forward to showing that because it's pretty cool. And now here we are in Too Cold Cave. There are two enemies that are kind of difficult to get by. They are wizards who have an AoE attack. Now that one is not quite in an optimal area for me right now. I need him to be turned around and facing the other way in order to be able to get by him without getting into the fight. If I keep moving up like this, it makes him move positions immediately as opposed to just waiting. Oh yeah, wizard is not cooperating. Wizard, please. Wizard. Wizard, stop being a clod. Be our friend here. We're trying to save the universe. I am going to report this wizard to Dumbledore. Do it. There's also Onion over there. Um, he sells you stuff. Oh, that is he Onion. I didn't even notice that. He just uh, shows up in random places. How he got there, I don't know, but it's Onion, so I think it's best not to question his methods. Never question Onion. Now, that one, now, the first wizard is just kind of annoying to get by. This is the one that's a little more tricky. I'm going to try to freeze the snowball up on these steps while also avoiding the wizard. Wizard is unfortunately also in a bad spot. Uh, let's see. Alright, the wizard has moved away, so we should be good to go. There we go. And that is Too Cold Cave. Ready when you guys are. I don't know exactly how cold it is, but it is too cold. Confirmed too cold. Stick together. I'm gonna open up this chest here, grab a couple of Yay! items from in here. Including a big donut, because nothing restores your health like a big old donut. Now we have another dialogue option here. We're gonna give it to Connie, since Connie's experience is pretty much the most important in this run. Now, Steven also does not like doors, so we're going to skip getting the key to unlock that and simply uh, head on through like that. That is one of the latest clips that has been discovered. Um, otherwise, I would have to go up to a, uh, the upper area that was over there and do a fight. And by doing that fight, it would give me a chest with the key. So doing it this way, you end up saving up about a minute and 40 seconds in a run, so it is pretty significant. Now, here we're going to pick up a Thoughtful Gift. Thoughtful Gifts are used outside of battle, and they increase the relationship bar between two characters. And that is pretty important because that is what allows us to build up characters' relationships without having to do additional fights. Otherwise, if those did not exist in the game, we would just like have to arbitrarily pick a fight where we get um, into combat and just start healing or defending or doing whatever. So it's like really cool that the devs decided to put an item in like that. So we're going to continue on. Just a little bit of movement until we get to the next boss room of the area. If you couldn't tell, uh, basically each of these areas has a boss near the end. Except Bismuth Forge, because it just has a bunch of fights you do in the end and not an actual boss. That's why all bosses doesn't have to go through it. Which is also another thing that makes the glitch pretty cool, because it essentially means we can skip a part of the game. Come on, team. And now we're moving on to Square Dot. So Square Dot is where we're going to see the really cool team attack between Garnet and Connie. Now, uh, RNG for 
square dot here. Basically, I need to, uh, basically, either she does one of two attacks, and if she does her other attack, it's going to lose about 28 or so seconds. And also, quick question, chat. Out of Amethyst, Garnet, and Pearl, which is your favorite gem? It's going to be important in a little bit. Garnet, Garnet. So for this fight, the first thing I'm going to do is have Connie study. When Connie studies, her attack power for her next attack goes up by one. So Connie is going to study. We're going to have Garnet use this attack called Shieldbreaker, which is a defense debuff. Toss that onto her. Connie's going to finish up studying. We pray for RNG, and Square Dot decides we're going to get some leg exercise today. So I get to practice pressing the A button and getting perfect blocks. Oh, and I missed it with Connie. All right, Amethyst is doing good. Connie, there we go. There we go. One Connie. Garnet got one. Steven got one. Garnet got one. Good workout. Really good workout. And now she's going to do her other attack. If you know the Legend of Zelda, it may look familiar to you. She's going to summon this ball of light, and we're going to play tennis. And after a couple of hits, she messes up. She's going to come out of her ship and yell something at us. Oh, very rude. So now we're going to go over to these fire salt bits, put them onto Connie, and do the team attack. And now, this is why their team attack is kind of broken. This section right here, where Connie does a flurry of blows, every single one of those is based off of her own attack. And, uh... Now I just realized I actually messed up. But, um, every single one of those is based off of her own attack. So, if you fill up her attack through various means, um, it's going to make her attacks extremely powerful. And that's what basically lets you one-shot bosses in this game. Now, uh, the mistake I made is that I forgot to level up Connie before this fight, which is uh, a bit unfortunate. But otherwise, uh, she always goes down in one hit. And there we go. Garnus is going to pow with a rocket fist and take out Sparadot. Take that, you Claude. And I can tell you from watching chat, even though Garnet was a very high contender, Pearl is definitely the winner of that uh, poll we did. Pearl is the winner. Excellent. Pearl happens to be my favorite gem. Oh, the crux of speedrunning this when Pearl is your favorite gem. She has seen the least amount in the speedruns. So we got Garnet in the background there, holding up Square Dots. Gonna grab a couple of items from these chests here. And now we are off to the barn. The barn! So we're gonna save and quick because that's a little bit faster than running back to the warp pad. And we're going to warp ourselves to the barn now that it's open. Awesome. Now, for you Steven Universe fans out there, since we're heading to the barn, we are going to meet everyone's favorite character from the show. And there she is! Pumpkin! Yay! Look at, look, she, look at her rolling. She's Aww. adorable. I love her. Uh, pumpkin's the oh. best. Hey. Yeah. Oh, and, and I guess Lapis and Peridot are here, too. I guess some people like them. I don't know. Some people, like, ship them. I don't, I don't really pay too much attention to that stuff. Now, what happens when a Peridot meets a Peridot? I'm sure lots of Claudes. You Claude! You're the claudiest Claude I've ever seen clodding around. You're the claudiest Claude I've ever seen clodding around. Claude! Well, Peridots use some uh, very colorful languages, I'm sorry. I don't think they understand. I don't think they know they're in a kid's game. 
<sighs> I don't know that we can approve of that language. And uh, and now she's getting a little rowdy. So uh, Pearl, Pearl, help us out here. So Pearl's going to go ahead and poop Square Dot. For those of you that don't know Steven Universe, whenever a gem takes enough damage, they uh, they poof. Because it's not their actual physical form, it's like a light construct, it's basically like a hologram. Now, we're going to talk to Connie here and get some experience. I'm going to go over to Pumpkin, I'm going to mash the A button. This doesn't actually do anything, but I like to think this is the equivalent of me petting her. And so, in Steam Universe Save the Light, you can, in fact, pet the dog. Pet the pumpkin! And now, we are heading towards Strawberry Battlefield. Now, we gotta put Amethyst away, because we're gonna have Peridot joining us. Yay! Now, earlier we did mention character speeds. So, Steven is the slowest, Connie and Pearl move at about the same speed, and Peridot is the fastest. And your ab combat ability is moving these boxes. Steven. Um. So, for as long as Peridot is in your party, you're basically going to be controlling her. She also has this absolutely wonderful jump here. In a lot of ways, it's basically like a Yoshi jump. Cool. Do we still need to level up uh, Connie um, after the missed one earlier? Uh, yes, we level her up in uh, Temple Crater, which is where we also toss on some more thoughtful gifts. There you go, Chad. Don't worry. Connie will get all of her levels. And then some. And then I some. The She's also probably going to get some pizza after this because this is quite a workout. Yeah, I think we're all going to need some pizza after this. <clears throat> Definitely. I'm probably going to need some cold medicine, too. Oh, no. One of the advantages of being a gem is that you don't get colds, because you don't actually have a body. So if you're ever wondering how to avoid colds, just, uh, just become a gem. And don't get your gem smashed. That's bad. That, too. If you do that, you're going to have a bad time. Very bad time. Now we grab our last tungsten here. Now I'm sure you may be wondering, if Connie is faster than Garnet, why did I use Garnet to go up there? Well, curious people watching this video, the reason that we use Garnet is because even though Connie is faster, she takes three swings of the sword to defeat the, the enemy, gem. to uh, break that open. Whereas Garnet, being the powerful gem that she is, only takes one punch. Here we are. So it ends up being about half a second faster for Garnet to hop up there and grab it. And here's a little bit of uh, lore about Hess Knight. It's irrelevant to defeating her, so don't have to read it. Now here we're going to use Steven, jump up here. The intended way is to run around those blocks using Peridot, but that is a little bit faster. Saves you about seven or eight seconds. It's pretty cool. Also here, the intended way is to grab that other block and come through this area with it and use that to jump on top of this block. But there conveniently happens to be a little rock right here, so I can just double jump up here. Steven's going to say Needle Burrito as we open up that chest. We're going to go grab this key because we got a key over here to grab. And another door. Now, I don't believe I mentioned what these tungstens are, and I kind of skipped past the cutscenes pretty quickly, but basically, Peridot is going to make a tracking device to find out where Hess Knight is. So we have to come to Strawberry Battlefield, which is where we can acquire these gems. That seems legit. Yeah, it's a good thing. And a little more movement with Peridot. And here's a question from chat. Uh, do we get some of the other fusions like Sugalite in the game? Like, I know we don't in the run, but uh, are they even available in the game or is it just like Stevani? Um, Not in the run, but you are correct. In the game, you do get the fusions. 
So you get Sardonyx, you get Sugar Light, you get Smoky Quartz. Time to vacate. Uh, and because this tick took place, this game was made before Change Your Mind, so you don't see any of those fusions, unfortunately, the ones with Steven. Can yeah. believe we can't. Here? I don't know whether uh, Nicki Minaj is still voicing Sigalite, but uh, it's there. Item, I you. Um, no, the none of the fusions are actually voiced in the game. Now I don't know. Like obviously Nicki Minaj because uh, Cartoon Network doesn't want to pay her or something. But I'm not too sure why they did why they weren't able to get the other voice actors for the fusions. Yeah, they probably just decided if they couldn't get any, like, one of them, they wouldn't bother with any of them. Yeah, most likely. So I'm gonna grab uh, this chest here for another thoughtful gift. Grab this other tungsten here in the crater. Couple of enemies here to avoid on our way to the last tungsten. And we're going to, once again, give Connie a compliment. Now, I do want to say at this point, we're not doing it to build Steven and Connie's relationship up. But well, we're just doing that because Connie gets some experience out of it. So that's for the experience, right there specifically. So again, because Garnet can just break this open a little bit faster. Before I switch back to Peridot. You want to be careful when you switch uh, party members here because if you switch while the cannon has um, shot a bullet up into the air, it'll actually still count the other character as the hitbox. So, yeah, you can accidentally get into that fight if you aren't careful with when you're switching. And uh, that's not a good time. I have lost runs because of that. Which doesn't sound good. So, uh, chat is currently talking about fusions. Uh, Valden, uh, which one, which fusion is your favorite? I personally like mm. Opal. This planet sure and Stevani. I'm going to probably have to go with Sardonyx. Sardonyx is pretty amusing to me. Crash. And now for this boss, we need good RNG. I need this weak point to be in either the stomach or the hand. The head is bad. Like that. That's bad. Oh, marathon luck, please. So the reason why I needed to be in one of those two spots is because, once again, we're going to be using Garnet and Connie's team attack. And... That can, uh, that works in either the stomach or the hand, but we cannot attack the head. And also, uh, unlike the first boss, Steven doesn't yell out the name here. And as you can hear, he doesn't actually say it. That's sad. I just realized I missed a joke of saying, like... Vegito for my favorite fusion. That would have been great. Don't can, worry, can chat, I, chat had can your I, back. Can I, can I reset my run? Can uh, we redo it? I mean, well, we're only like 50 minutes in. Yeah, sure, no problem. All right, Don't cool. worry, chat, chat had your back. Chat definitely listed that as uh, their favorite fusion, some of them. All right, thank you. So we're going to have Connie study twice for this boss. We're going to put a attack band onto Connie. Garnet is going to use Shield Breaker, where that weak point Ready? is. <laughs> and once again, that wonderful exploit there is going to allow us to one-shot Mace. Uh, unfortunately, I messed up Square Dot, so you didn't get to see a one-shot, but there you go. Boss down in one shot. Woo. Easy. Fear a 14 year old with a sword. They are extremely powerful. And because we skipped doing a bunch of fights, we're going to be seeing a uh, lot of level ups here. So Steven can now play the ukulele. 
he could not play the ukulele up until this point. It just like <laughs> suddenly came back to him like, whoa, wait, I can play the ukulele. Now, when he plays the ukulele, it's going to increase a character's attack for the duration. And it's basically like using one of the attack items. So it's uh, like, like a free attack item, basically, since you don't have to actually use an item. You just can use Steven's ability, and it only costs two stars. So now we're at the Ancient Sky Arena. This is the place where uh, Pearl is taking Connie to practice her sword fighting. And it happens to be where Hess Knight has wound up. And thanks to Paradot's lovely little tracking device. So uh, shout out to Paradot for that. Very cool of her. And so she's going to yell at the prison for not being powerful enough to create constructs. And she's going to give us a very dirty look before disappearing. Now apparently she has gone back to Strawberry Battlefield, and who knows why? I certainly don't, so we're going to be heading to the Temple Crater and find out what the heck is going on. Now a couple times when I mined the Warpad, you may have noticed the exclamation mark. And the entire time there's been one over Beach City, and that's because of the forge skip that I did earlier. That's just letting you know that Lion is ready to go to Hesse Knight, take us there. So he's probably been sitting there wondering where we are. It's been like 40 minutes, where are these guys? Not really, he's sleeping. Lion is pretty lazy. As we all would be. Oh yeah, definitely. Lion's pretty relatable. He likes to eat, and he likes to sleep. Plus, he's a pink lion that can teleport around. I mean, I think we all wish we could be lion. Truly. Oh, I, I can do that, too. I mean, you get to lion around on the job. <laughs> yep. Wow, I am full of pride that you made that joke. I got you. Like, that just came naturally. You didn't really have to claw for it. Hold on, I'm going to pause the game real quick. Wow. Yes. And we're going to call this area Danger Dungeon. That is does... the most appropriate name. Yes, uh, there's a couple of different options you can name it, but it doesn't really matter except on the main screen it will show something different. Hey, let's go admire this mural of Rose Quartz. Mom? That is Rose Quartz, who is Steven's mother, but Steven is also his mother. It's kind of a complicated situation. A lot of the show actually delves into that kind of debate a lot. Yeah, like a, a big thing with the whole series is, is Steven his mom or is he his own person? It's kind of a neat little self-discovery kind of plot line to this to the show. Now, over here, I'm going to jump over the edge to activate the cutscene. It doesn't do anything, but Peridot takes damage, and I want her to yell out Claude. You, Claude. Ah, she didn't yell Claude. She just screamed. No. Oh. And now, Hess Knight has finally had enough of us, so she's going to wipe the party. That's very So, poof, poof. No. Poof. Swing. Now, uh, Pearl, being the strongest of the gems, oh, is the only one that can actually stand up to her. Yes, you. How about, you know, I know. And then Steven's gonna come and distract her. Screen flash is white. I'm presuming the Hess Knight just, like, smacks him and knocks him, off, knocks him out, which is kind of rude, if you ask me. Yeah, and Connie and Greg are both fully human, so they a thousand percent do not poof. And Steven, as far as we know it, that when this game takes place, does not poof. We will not say anything more on that topic. Oh, hey, it's a new friend. And that is Sapphire. I'm also uh, putting up the menu glitch there because there we go. I can jump and maneuver during this cutscene to get into this room and save a little bit of time from going there and also a little bit of a loading time there. Um... 
So now the party has been split up. Peridot and Connie are together right here. They got some things to do. And also, yeah, and also Garnet has been poofed. Now, if you didn't know, um, Garnet is made up of two lesbians known as Ruby and Sapphire. They're, they're, a, they're a permafusion. And so uh, with this group here, we happen to have Sapphire. And she just kind of sits there and lets us go off and collect all the items. She doesn't really participate. To be fair, neither does Ruby. Ruby is just busy being angry. Yeah. Which, is, uh, uh, which is understandable. I mean, I would be angry too. And Sapphire knows everything's going to be okay, so she doesn't need to join. Yeah, exactly. You can't even spoil Sapphire. Because Sapphire just already knows. And we're going to run over here to grab this chest as well. Grab a couple of items in here. Now we're going to continue moving on. Coming up will be an enemy that is a little bit difficult to get by, but some characters can just move at a diagonal and it won't stab you. Paradox happens to be one of those, which is really cool, because Connie isn't one of those characters. And I'm just going to wait here a moment for it to reappear. Now if I move... Now if I move along the bottom here, I will not get hit by the spikes as they come out of the floor, saving you a little bit of time. I'm going to take some damage here because if you don't take damage before entering these portals, Peridot and Connie just kind of hover above the end area there. I don't know why that happens, and I don't know why taking damage makes it not happen, but that's, uh, that's the thing you gotta do. This wizard, very easy to avoid, luckily. Now, here we're coming up to a puzzle that Peridot can use her telekinesis to help us get through. Or you can just press your control stick towards the portal you need to go through, and Peridot happens to have a high enough falling speed, and they happen to have large enough hitboxes that you just uh, go off to the next portal. I go through all the portals, you clod. And we're going to grab this ancient Dini Majid. And now that we have two, we can go ahead and open up this door and go to the next area. I don't know why Steven, I don't know why Connie is telling Steven to check it out. Steven's not here. Or is he? Hmm. Perhaps Steven is everywhere. And uh, most of the gems use she, her pronouns. I believe uh, Rainbow Quartz 2.0 is the only exception. Uh, Rainbow Quartz also uses uh, he, him. And um, Smoky Quartz uses they, them. Yeah. So yeah, it depends, it depends on the gem fusion, but in generally speaking, the gems themselves use uh, she, her. And so next up, we're coming to a uh, another part, a uh, another skip in the game that uh, I discovered, and it's incredibly ironic. I discovered a skip that you don't do a fight with Pearl, which would be the only fight you use Pearl. However, at the same time, you can only do the skip thanks to Pearl, so it's kind of a uh, conflicting for me. Anyway, I'm about to do the Pearl Skip, and it does require a little bit of focus, so... We're, I'm gonna talk about it. Mm -hmm. So, the big goal for here is we need to get Greg behind this piece of rubble, which will kind of get him stuck. And then, once we get there, we are going to uh, kind of be bouncing back between who is our main movement character between Greg and Pearl. Um, only the main movement character can actually get attacked by enemies. So, um, we will be taking advantage of that. It looks like we may have gotten an accidental encounter. Yeah, the skip can be a, a little, little finicky. 
It's definitely the hardest thing to perform in the run. But yeah, essentially what we're doing is we're getting Greg stuck behind that rubble, and that stabby enemy doesn't have an aggro range behind the rubble. And you need Pearl to throw her spear in order to activate that block and open up the gate. And when you switch back to Greg, the game thinks to hear Greg, like that's the person that it reads during the cutscene. And so you're able to avoid getting into that fight. Otherwise, like you saw there, the enemy is just going to stab me during the cutscene. And so the whole setup the, the net would not have a point. And also, uh, Greg and Pearl can both just move at a diagonal and the enemy won't stab them. Getting Greg stuck behind. Okay, we're getting Pearl up, and we're going to be trying to throw a spear with her um, and then send it back to Greg's control. And that will allow the spear to hit something on his side, which allows us to skip an area. But it's a little picky. Yeah, and there it was. Perfect. Yep, there we go. So now I just have to get out of here. Where's the wizard? Wizard! Nope. Go away. And maybe one more stab. You have a little bit of an audio cue. I don't know how easy it is to hear, but it laughs. The thing is, it can delay the attack by like up to six or seven seconds. So you don't quite know if you're going to hear that laugh and it's going to appear immediately or if it's just going to come and try to stab you like 10 seconds later. Yeah, that is a uh, probably one of, in addition to being like the hardest skip, it's outside of boss RNG, something that's going to kill the most amount of runs, either due to time loss or time loss from standing up or accidentally getting into the fight. And now, as I mentioned, you have to be moving diagonal to skip these fights. However, the character model doesn't have to be actually moving, so. I could spend the rest of my run just doing this and never get hit. Pearl's just too powerful. Mm hmm. So, uh, we've seen a couple of characters, what they do outside of battle, and Amethyst, unsurprisingly, uses her whip. So, it can be used to grab items across a void like this. You may have seen a couple of times that there are items that are kind of like. It looked as though no one would be able to jump to them. You're supposed to use Amethyst to grab them. But for all bosses, the only time we actually use that ability by her is right here to grab the key. And also, there's Ruby. As you can see, she's angry. Can't blame her. I'm gonna play a little bit of Dragon Force before going back to Pearl. Yeah, it's kind of a Ruby's modus operandi. What, what's Ruby doing? Being angry. Mm-hmm. Sapphire, calm and collected. Ruby, I'm going to punch someone. I'm going to flip this table so hard. Now, here is one of the hardest parts of the run coming up right here. Oh, especially if that happens. <laughs> All right, I have to reopen the game. Oh, that's never fun. That is a uh, kind of a rare soft lock where the game just kind of Steven can't move or do anything and he also cannot pause. And I'm not sure I'm not too sure why that happens. It happened to me once before. But luckily, the game does save right in that area, so I don't have to actually go and do the pearl skip all over again. Auto saving for the win. Yeah, good old auto saving. The game auto saves after you enter or leave every area, so that's uh, incredibly useful. Let's be real. I think we all have a little bit of Ruby inside of us. Oh. We're just like, oh, what's that? We're a little angry, Ruby. <laughs>
There we go. See, so yeah, it's the hardest part of the run because uh, it soft locks and crashes on you. <laughs> no, but um, this part of the run is just basically um. exposition as Steven goes through his uh, like little dream sequence here. So you run over to these pillars of light and they unlock into a little scroll. Wow. And it's a little bit of lore. Like it tells you a little bit about Rose Quartz. Another one tells you a little bit about the um, prism. About Hess Knight. Like here's Hess Knight. Uh, you can see that yellow diamond is giving her the prism. Oh, wow. So this is the part where as a speedrunner, I'm just kind of like resident sleeper. Um... But the cool thing about being in marathons is that you can say things like, Hey, do we have any announcements to do right now? Ooh. Well, we can definitely talk about some things like any donations, any sort of bits and uh, subs that we get to the channel. Uh, those all go towards uh, paying for and supporting these sort of hot fixes. So if you like the community spotlights, if you like the sprints, if you like frame fatales like we're doing right now, then it is your bits and your subs that help support those events. So if you like them to continue or want to wow. see more, get those bits and subs in there. Also, for those who are not aware, October is Disability Month on Hotfix. So I'm gonna link that in the chat. So it is a marathon. So if you wanna, if you have any sort of disability, physical, mental, hidden, obvious, and you speed run and would like to display something on the Games Done Quick channel, uh, do submit for that uh, Disability Month event. It's a really great opportunity and it's going on for the entire month. All right, and now we are back here with Peridot and Connie and Steven. Oh, I'm coming here because I want to grab this light Steven with Connie. No Getting way. her a level up, which we need. Now we switch party members here. That way, uh, Peridot kind of jumps down there, saves a little bit of time. And hey, there's everyone else. And now it's time to reunite Ruby and Sapphire. Steven. So you're yeah. going to fuse. They're not going to do a dance because we're doing a speed run, so they kind of, you know, gotta, gotta hurry up. Snap, snap. It actually is RNG there, whether they kind of, like, fuse instantly or they, like, glow and everything like they do in the show. So here we're going to swap out Peridot for Greg. Apologies to everyone who loves Peridot, but her time in the speedrun has come to an end. No, you clubs! <laughs> but uh, hey, maybe we can uh, give her a little clap. She did pretty well. Yeah. Very useful. I I'm proud of her. Go, Perry. Perry's come a long way. Now, since uh, we don't have Peridot in the party anymore, we're going to be going back to Connie. Now, as far as speed, just a fun little fact. For the longest time, we had thought that Greg and Steven were the same speed, aka that they were both the slowest. However, when I decided to do a retime of it and make the distance a lot longer, it actually turns out that Greg is very, very slightly faster than Steven. Like, not not by much. It's, like, hardly noticeable, but... Yes, Greg is, in fact, faster than Steven. We have faith in you, Greg, all along. And speaking of Greg, so I have Greg back in the party, and I didn't do that just for show. Greg is going to now have an ability called Star Jam, which is really useful for this fight and also the next two fights. So what Star Jam does is he plays a guitar, and whereas in the beginning he had the one attack that was that damage aura, um, he also now has a healing aura attack, although we don't use that in the run. But Star Jam uh, increases the speed of the star bar in the bottom left filling up. In addition, when we level up Greg and put some levels into his abilities, one of the things that he unlocks is that whenever a character does an ability that's a charge up, 
it makes it speed it up like a lot quicker. Now, that is what Connie's attack is. And especially for this first Light Warrior fight that we're doing here, it is important because we need Connie to study five times. So Greg being able to speed that up and make it almost instant is really cool. And Greg speeds up too, the fight. Greg too powerful. That's the power of rock and roll. It's true. So one level of charm goes on Greg so that he gets to that level. And there we go, Star Jam. This one goes on to Connie. He now has Sword Storm. Sword Storm is basically like the attack that Stevani had, except now Connie can do it without needing to fuse. Now we have a lot of leveling up to do. Steven says he loves upgrades. So what's important for Steven is that he gets fast food, decreases the backpack's cooldown. Connie, just more attack and more luck since he does a lot of damage. Garnet, you want her to get leadership there, which increases everyone's defense by two. And then basically everything else just goes into defense. A lot of these characters get defense just so it makes them more consistent that they don't accidentally die in a fight. And like Greg says, rock on. Rock on. And the last thing we have to do is toss on our other badge we use in the run. That makes it so that whenever you start a fight, you get plus one to your star. So instead of starting with five, we now start with six. And also, this thing I did here is called the depth skip. Again, the game only cares that I exited that room from the northern area, not that I actually went through the room intended. So by warping back to the beginning and running like this, I get to skip doing like the big puzzle in that room. And we call that depth skip. And now here is our next boss, Light Warrior. So I need Connie to study five times, Steven to play the ukulele, Garnet's defense debuff on a Light Warrior, and Sword Storm will allow us to take it out with one hit. Green, awesome RNG. And again, you hear Greg uh, playing that uh, guitar, and you can hear a guitar has been added to the track. Alright, so one more study on Connie, and she is good to go. And we should- oh, there we go. Get in before the attack. So, green means the light warrior heals itself. Red means that it's going to fire some bombs into the air that fall randomly. So they may hit no one in your party, they may hit everyone in your party, or some combination. If it's blue, it fires an energy attack that uh, is similar to what Squaredot did. And if it's colorless, that is the worst, because that is a AoE attack that hits everyone in the party. Very uncool of it to do that. Oh no! Oh man. Um let's go. And so now we've defeated the Light Warrior. We're gonna open up this chest because we got a couple of more things to grab out of it. And we want to throw some oh, gifts God, between okay. Connie and Garnet. Now, trick. after the mace fight, they kind of complemented oh, no. each other. Uh, and that's like a scripted oh, thing. And it essentially was the same as them getting a thoughtful gift. That's why you only need two at this point instead of three. And now we're heading back to Beach City. This would be the point where if the Ford skip didn't exist or if we couldn't... Uh, or if we couldn't use it earlier in the run, we would go back to Bismuth's Forge and go through the area there. But all bosses, we can just kind of skip that. And now some hitboxes on a statue here, which allow me to get up this way as opposed to going around the mountain. And hey, there's Lion. Sleeping away. Lion best. Now I say we are going to wait because... If you pick the other option, it doesn't load up the warship unless everyone in the party goes through the portal. 
so it's a little bit faster to just uh, say, hold on, we'll wait, and go in yourself. Steven, look at this place. So now we're in Hessen Knight's warship. We're in outer space. Opening up the menu here, that we can run on through the door during the cutscene. And we're at the final area of the game. What? This is also some uh, RNG stuff, so you go ahead and toss in some blessed RNGs or whatever if you want. Get all of those blessed RNGs in chat. Or clods. Let's, you know, get some good clods in there. Those are good for RNG, right? Mm-hmm. And so first we fight the Prism. The Prism is like a Light Warrior. It's like the Light Warrior, except super beefed up. So here we go. Oh, awesome. I got a glitch where it doesn't actually uh, go on to its next... Um, like, it doesn't actually choose a color, which is pretty cool. So Greg's going to be jamming out. Steven's got the ukulele. Connie's all ready to go. And we'll just wait here a moment. And then Garnet is going to toss her Ready. defense debuff onto the Light Warrior. Now it's going to choose a color. Oh, and it's blue. I'm actually going to wait in that case. Ready. Because if... Uh, when, it, when Garnet's defense debuff is on it, during its first phase, it'll just go away immediately. Uh, it'll take it to its next phase. The Prism has three distinct phases, and it'll only take damage up into that phase, and then, then at that point it moves on. So you can't just one-shot it like the other bosses. We also have to pick certain options here, otherwise it'll continue with the phase. So we pick the left one, the first two, and then the last phase we pick the uh, right-hand one. And there we go. And now we're going to use that Sword Storm again. Do enough damage to take it on to the next phase. Tell him the Prism don't have to be like this. We're trying to get through to him. And Red, that is uh, wonderful. So we're going to have Study... Uh, we're going to have... Yeah, we're going to have study Connie one more time. We're going to have Connie study one more time. That way she'll uh, do enough damage. I'm also just going to wait because the cooldown carries over to the next fight, so... Waiting there is a good idea. And another sword storm, and we've brought the prism down. Now we're going to tell the prism... This is really what you want. And that gets through to the prism. Now there is a bit of a music uh, glitch here, so I'm going to pause in a second. It may get very loud for a moment, so uh, just bear that in mind. And this is, the platform here is PC. And we're now fighting Hessenites. No. Ready? So, optimally, Connie only has to study two times um, a ukulele on Connie, and I want Hesonite to attack the Light Warrior. That's Greg, that's not the Light Warrior. And when she attacks the Light Warrior, there is like a massive debuff on her defense that she gets. So, it is enough that allows uh, Connie and Garnet's team attack to one-shot her. Also, this track, I love this track, especially with Greg's guitar added to it. So she has a couple of different attacks. She has the one where she just goes and uh, swings with her sword. This here is an AoE, and then she has one attack that just uh, takes everyone out at once. I mean, um... She points her sword at someone, and she'll instantly kill them unless they're bubbled. Otherwise, she just does half damage. Uh, half their health, that is. Like that. Thank you, Hess Knight. You're demonstrating it for me. Why are you so weird? Please. Love 
So yeah, this is uh, unfortunately not very good RNG. Ideally, Hesnai will like attack one person and then the Light Warrior. And there you go, 46. That's half of 92. At least I think it is. I don't do math too well, so I'm just going to trust it. Now, the reason I have Connie continuously study is just because with Garnet's debuff, Connie and Garnet can take her out with like eh, about like 13 studies. So that is the uh, outback, the uh, uh, backup for getting bad RNG here. And I keep using these star foods just so I have enough stars here. On the bright side, we get to listen to this really good boss battle music. So good. Got you, Steven. And yes, for those who are seeing the, this game for the first time, this is actually the second game. The first one is Attack the Light, which is on mobile. Good gravy. Gem powers Let's get that uh, guitar back. Might as well be listening to some good music while we're getting bad RNG. Oh, she really doesn't like Steven today, huh? Ah, it's her instant death again. Stop that, Hesonite. Stop it. Alright, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to go ahead and just uh, do the attack. Uh, also, you can see Connie's study just like literally keeps on stacking, so uh, it's pretty broken. Uh, no. He's safer to have Steven heal himself right now. Now, I just want to see what she. Okay! That is Hess Knight for you folks. Waits until the very last moment. So now she has that massive debuff on her. Uh, Steven would play his ukulele. We're going to pretend that Connie only has two studies and none of that just happened. So ukulele, two studies, Garnet's debuff, Light Warrior debuff, and team attack. It's going to be beautiful. And time is coming up in just a moment. And yeah, there goes that massive overkill. She deserves it though. And time right here. Woo! And that was Steven Universe Save the Light. Now, while time ends here, there is a still a couple of more dialogue options here. So I feel that it would be appropriate that we go out for pizzas. So let's go ahead and do that. Yay, pizzas! So we're gonna let the prism decide who it wants to go with. And the Prism is going to choose to stay on planet Earth. And so we're going to all go back to the barn and hang out, relax after saving the world, and get some pizzas. Which I think is a pretty good idea. I could probably go for a pizza today myself. Pizza's too powerful. And so again, classic Steven Universe fashion, we uh, kind of leave the door open for maybe Hesonite can be redeemed later on. So anyway, yes, that is Steven Universe, Save the Light, All Bosses. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Thank you very much for Frame for Tows for having me. Um, this game is really fun. I definitely recommend it casually. If you're a fan of Steven Universe, I think you would love it. You'd, you'd love it. Even if you don't like Steven Universe, I think it's still a fun game. And there's plenty of things that you didn't get to see in this run. Like every area has a hidden area that you don't go to in all bosses. There's more things to go off and collect. There's more stuff to do in Beach City. So yeah. Go out for pizzas. And thanks so much for coming to this. And of course, the very last thing. We end with the Crystal Gem Star on Steven. And thank you very much. I hope everyone enjoys the rest of the marathon. And uh, yeah, enjoy snowboard, kids.
which should be a great run next.